gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us and coming. What I would like to see happening, or what I would hope, is that you have a free discussion amongst yourself, and we are just, um, well, there are just a few people in the walls of your boardroom room, like flies. What we would be interesting, what is so important, if you look at what we've been talking, and of course, ongoing is the question of recalibrating what we've heard so many times, growth in the European economy, where do we get it right, how do we deal with balance sheets, what's coming from Basel, how do we deal with the Capital Markets Union, what do you as leaders in your, in, of your company do with, uh, with conduct and how do we deal with dig digital challenges? All this has been discussed. But indeed, I would like to ask you um, three questions. First, indeed, as CEOs, how do you see challenges ahead for your banks? As captains of the ship, where do you see, you, 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 where do you think you should sail? That is the first question. Then the second one is you're all three um, CEOs of important European banks. How, where does Europe sit in uh, the global competition? How do you see our finance develop? And the third one, and I think that is one of the, the, the most important ones, and I will come, and I know that later we have a short slide to show this, how can we have a sustainable banking business in the future? Where do we have the right balance between profitability and service provision in our banking? Now, these are the three questions, and I would like to uh, start with Frederic, if I may, on, sir, your bank, where does it go? Well. That's, of course, uh, a, a, a significant topic. And, and to a certain extent, as you said, uh, Vim, uh, at the end of the day, uh, beyond what we've been uh, sharing together, and I must say I, I share most of what was said, the question for a CEO is about implementation, is uh, about how to do it. And of course, as you mentioned, we have a, a question of uh, priority, because our ourselves, huh, we can work hard. But we have, of course, to try to, uh, to think about what will be the key um, uh, success factors. So let me answer f your first question. And, and, and I would say um, I have uh, fundamentally four things in mind. The first, and I will be quick on this, but it's still very important for me. Uh, I want to be able to spend time with clients. Uh, the big risk, <laughs> we've described the regulatory landscape, uh, the issues of culture, uh, the issue of digital, is that at the end of the day, the risk is to stay in your head office and be burdened by things which are not directly related to clients. And I consider my role as having to support the business. The second thing is, uh, with all what we've said, all the uncertainty, all the rules which are not defined, all the challenges, at the end of the day, try to think about what is the right business model for Societe Generale. And this answer will be different, I would guess, from uh, Santander or from uh, uh, the bank uh, giving you uh, leads in Poland. Uh, PKO, I mean, we are different, and I think there is room for different banks. And more than ever, what is important is try, try to think where we can add value. There was this concept, where can we add value going forward? Can I just say, for me, when I answer this question, I, I look at the past of the bank because I think we cannot forget about the real DNA and expertise. And of course, I try to combine then uh, the anticipation of the future. We are in what we call the universal bank. I don't like this word because it seems we would do everything to uh, everybody, which is on the contrary uh, in this uh, refocusing game, uh, uh, totally different. But we ambition going forward to still combine retail activities and, I would say, wholesale activities. I, I oversimplify. Uh, we do retail in EMEA, and we will be very disciplined, and that's a difference, and there is not a good and bad answer with my friend from uh, uh, Santander, who can be elsewhere in the uh, US or uh, Latin America, which is a, a result of history, but also in practice of a strategic uh, thought process where it seems to me it's now difficult to enter into new markets on retail, starting from scratch. Second, the, the wholesale banking is the, at the heart of our 150 history. We know how to deal with corporates. And when I see all of what has to be done uh, in terms of the financing of the economy, 
not just in the Eurozone, but elsewhere internationally, it's somewhere where I want to further position the bank. And I want us to be, if you believe in the development of capital markets, disintermediation, one, clearly we are already, but to remain one of the leading banks in this disintermediation process. In the second question, I will answer on where Europe stands. The third, uh, the third obsession uh, is, of course, around digital. Knowing that I can say on one hand I belong maybe to the di dinosaur category, but <laughs> that I would like to, to be able to survive some time, you know, as a dinosaur. Huh? So uh, I don't know if Google will help to, to live 500 years, but uh, the idea for me is to really ensure we, uh, uh, and really it's not about why, e, uh, if, whatever, it's how are we doing to do it as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. A lot has been said, I don't want to repeat what was said. Can I just highlight one or two elements which can be a bit specific? The first thing is that in practice, we are already in the digital world. What I mean by this, it happens, again, it's a result of history, coincidence, we have a native digital bank within our bank, uh, within our group, which is called Boursorama. It's the leading online bank in France. And when I say this, it means we are not looking at it, uh, this world as a, an unknown world. We already know how to develop, also the difficulties to develop, because let's face it, uh, people talk about all the opportunities, but it's not so easy. If I could say uh, Boursorama will have 10 million clients in two years' time, I would say, say it, but it will not be the case. But I'm just saying it will, be a, it will take a certain time. And uh, when I say Boursorama, I just would like to tell you, for me, it's my internal startup. It is my insurance premium. If I fail to adapt the uh, traditional networks, at least uh, I, I should be able to have Boursorama. And if we are bad with Boursorama, we are really bad bankers. But beyond this, I would say it's a way also to disseminate uh, knowledge, expertise, uh, and, and again, not to be afraid of it. A second point which I would like to say, uh, and I don't want to be too long, but when I look at retail and uh, wholesale banking, I must say, and I oversimplify, but I c tend to consider that the challenge on retail will be more difficult for fundamentally two reasons. It's more difficult to adapt large branch organization with uh, dozens of thousands of people than smaller teams in wholesale banking, which by essence are a little bit more agile. Second, it seems to me that the disruption on retail where at the end of the day, the, the relationship is largely concentrated on one individual, it's a B2C, will be more important than to B2B. I'm not saying that there will, be, there will not be new technologies in the B2B, but I tend to think that the the diversity, the, 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 the nature of the relationship with the client uh, can be different. Third idea, which is a threat, or let's say a challenge uh, and an opportunity, a challenge versus maybe simpler business model, but also an opportunity. Uh, we have different business models. As I've said, retail, wholesale banking, but it happens also we manage more than one million cars in the world. Uh, we have a big fleet management business. It is, I think, difficult to pretend, at least uh, I, pre I don't pretend, that I can easily think about the right business model for so many different business models. And when I think about innovation, I have an obsession also, personally, to remain close to the clients. I'm always stuck that when we talk about Uber uh, or this Veno thing, it's about uh, guys, young guys, who did not get a taxi in Paris or maybe had a problem to send money on a weekend. I mean, they are the clients. And it seems to me uh, the risk of having a theoretical innovation process is that you forget about what the client needs. So it means a complexity to organize the innovation in a group like uh, where we are. I live, I want to have a lot of innovation close to the business, as close as possible to the business, while of course having people at the center just to check that all businesses look at that just to check also that there is not a disruptive uh, business model that they might not have seen and as a support. Fourth thing, and, and this is my fourth priority, and I will stop there. There, At the end of the day, uh, I have no certainty about the future. Uh, when people ask me what will be the format of branches in 10 years time, I can have an answer, but I, at the same time I say, listen guys, it's not reasonable to have a, a real certainty on this. Who knows about the technology? At the end of the day, it seems to me that uh, 
a capacity to build a culture, an integrated culture, an agile culture is at the end of the day a necessary uh, success factor. When I say this, definitely, I, I liked what uh, one of the panelists said, I think it was Mr. Cattrell, which was to say, uh, culture is not just about conduct. I mean, we are not going to motivate talent just about conduct. Conduct has to be part of culture. Needless to say, it's a necessary condition. But beyond that, we need to build a, a culture, a, a leadership culture. Uh, for me, it's about client obsession, uh, about a capacity to innovate and create, uh, courage and responsibility, engagement and inspiration, and collective, a sense of collective interest. And we are going to build, I would say, an organization which will be able to adapt. Thank you very much. Mr. Zagia, well, where do you see PKO Bank going? What are the challenges and opportunities for your bank? Jim, thank you very much uh, for the invitation to this conference and this question. I'm smiling hearing these uh, uh, questions about five, ten years because my main worry now is to survive next uh, two months because in Poland uh, we have a <laughs> <laughs> parliamentary election. So there is uh, a lot of ideas uh, how to find money <laughs> to help people. And usually politicians are such as people who would like to help uh, people with the help of others' money. Yeah, <laughs> that's one question. Second one is uh, there are a lot of ideas <laughs> how to take money from the banking sector. <laughs> and this is one of the long-term worry when we think about next uh, few years. But I would like to start uh, from the mm, looking for the operational model for the bank. I am not so complex as uh, uh, Societe Generale uh, leading by Federic uh, because we are pure domestic bank. Uh, so. Uh, in last years, we take profit from this because Poland as an economy perform uh, fantastic compared to others. Uh, so, so we have uh, 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 only you know, uh, uh, GDP growth. Even if we, if we have slowed down, uh, it was very you know, short term. So uh, since the crisis, which was not a crisis in Poland, it was a slowdown, uh, our GDP improved its, uh, how to say, performance by accumulative 20 percent so this is a very good achievement in this time but coming back to the operational model of the bank as strategy uh, talking about the future five ten years is easy uh, for us because uh, 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 lifetime of CEOs of the banks in current world is shorter and shorter so <laughs> <laughs> so probably when you will be so kind and invite us in the next five years uh, we'll be no ex <laughs> <laughs> I am CEO since uh, six years, and uh, I, I am I am you know happy. I am happy that uh, in this time we prepare because this is not only my work, but uh, team around me. We prepare two strategies and uh, we execute them. So we have uh, some kind of experience uh, what we would like to do in the future, especially that this current strategy is finished in this year and now we are start working on the for the strategy in 2016-2020. And uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, the most challenge for us and probably for all banks, and this is, you know, uh, talking about this, is this digital challenge. Uh, looking at the uh, retail clients, uh, it's called omni-channel mm, uh, approach. But digital challenge, uh, which was mentioned during the, mm, one of the meeting here, and uh, what was, uh, mm, uh, uh, was uh, mm, uh, uh, strange for me, that there is no information about the uh, dark side of digital world. Because there only was information about bright side, means uh, people uh, use uh, only digital mm, uh, 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 devices, uh, send money, but uh, there is no about the risk. I, I was graduated uh, uh, years ago as a computer science engineer, and uh, I understand uh, this word uh, probably not very well, but well, because uh, for the last uh, uh, more than 20 years I'm working in the financial industry, and I see that, uh, how to say, criminals are shifting from the real uh, economy to the digital economy, mm -hmm. and uh, I expect that uh, there will be more and more uh, such as uh, crimes uh, in this uh, digital banking sector. Uh, there will be no such as, you know, uh, how to say, DDoS attacks, 
which, uh, how to say, stop uh, uh, banking activity, but there are more and more malwares and uh, phishing activity which create loss on the client side. And this is the problem of the culture which was mentioned also, because from the client perspective, they're using these uh, modern devices, but they thinking about the bank, about their money, is the historical one, means that they think that their money are not in the, in the uh, mobile handset, but in the treasury in the bank, yeah? That we are, you know, uh, put their money in the treasury in the bank, and if they, you know, send this with the help of the button on their handset, we are, you know, transferring them, you know, with the special cars uh, from one city to another one. And this is not true. And in my opinion, except of this development of the digital world, we will faced with the big problem of this cybercrime. And this is one challenge uh, uh, when I'm thinking about the future of my bank, because also we are in such a transition period uh, from the traditional bank to modern one. And uh, 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 probably uh, when I compare our, uh, our um, uh, panel with the previous one, we are a little bit older. So it means that we are in between, yeah? It means our generations, that uh, our generations uh, used uh, 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 traditional physical outlets, uh, traditional physical branches, but uh, this new one which we uh, 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 saw uh, two hours ago, probably these generations uh, uh, never, uh, how to say, in last year, uh, went to the bank to do anything. But this is the one thing. The second one is connected also with the digitization of our world. This is big data. And from one hand, this is, you know, this big data is a fantastic challenge bec because we could gather it a lot of money. But the problem is how to prevent this data from this, you know, cyber attack. Up to now, we heard about, you know, millions of records stolen from some, some you know, institutions. But what will happen if these, you know, millions of records will have, you know, full, full, inform full information, uh, information about, uh, you know, all, uh, all financial data of this person, yeah? That's, that's, in my opinion, a problem. Second one connected with this is data protection, because if you would like to use this data, the question is whether we could discriminate people uh, about uh, people who, who whose data we gather it, yeah? Because this is not only that, you know, if you often go to uh, a coffee shop, we could offer you, you know, cheaper, you know, uh, coffee uh, f uh, with the help of uh, paying by electronic way, but also uh, we offer for our clients uh, products uh, which uh, have embedded risk. So we have to uh, discriminate uh, this data as well. And the third one, this is uh, uh, also uh, known above uh, uh, us, this is uh, profitability of the banking sector. Because uh, mm, uh, there is, in my opinion, uh, a big uh, misunderstanding, for example, that uh, in Europe, banks uh, earn a lot of money. Of course, when uh, people look that this is, you know, one, two, three, four billion euro, they uh, seems that this is a lot of money. But when you compare this as a profitability uh, measured by efficiency uh, factors like ROE, we see that, you know, this is the uh, situations when bank uh, lose money, yeah? Means that uh, uh, return from equity is below the cost of equity. Maybe at the beginning this is uh, enough from my side. Yeah, thank you very much. Mr. Alvarez, uh, yeah. so, uh, Banco Santander has been hugely successful both in Europe but also in South America. So, and you also have the interesting question is that your competitor in Spain is becoming like a mobile phone. It's organization <laughs> structure. Not yet. So, <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so where does this bring Sant uh, Santander? Well, uh, let me let me to to start uh, with a. Uh, what can be seen uh, as a general statement. Uh, after the, the, the financial crisis, uh, the banks, uh, we need to vindicate ourselves. We need to vindicate our role in the, in the society yeah, because we suffer significant damage as a result of the financial crisis. We, for several reasons, we were uh, the, the ones who, who gave the financial crisis. 
So the first thing, uh, the first challenge we have, and we define our mission in this, with this view, is to have a mission, and we define our mission to help the companies and, and, per, and individuals to prosper in all the markets in which we operate. And this is our, this is our aim, this is our general aim as, as a company, yeah, that uh, is important to state, probably it's obvious, it's trivial, but has been discussed in the, in the last couple of years, and I think it's important to make clear statements about the banks are a, a necessary and positive for the, business, for the, for the, the society development in general. That's the phase. Uh, naturally, uh, we have different stakeholders. In, in every company, we, we have different stakeholders. Some are common. Uh, we have investors that naturally always demand certain return on equity, uh, certain financial parameters that naturally we need to fulfill to be successful and in the long run. And those are very well known. We are not fulfilling that much in Europe, probably as Vinny said, we will, see, we will talk later on about the profitability of the sector. Uh, that is, at least in Europe, is under question uh, to not today. Uh, we have a second, and Frederick elaborate a lot about this, also Vinny, that are the customers. Customers probably are demanding from us different things than they used to demand, or at least the relationships established in different bases than a couple of years ago. So the customers have now more information than they used to have because courtesy of internet, everything they want to buy from a bank, they have the possibility to check where is the price. The price are fairly transparent, are highly commoditized. So we have uh, customers there that uh, we need to establish with them a relationship that is, should be based on uh, the, a relationship in which we sell kind of uh, more simple products to them uh, that fulfill these needs uh, in a simple way, yeah? So, and, and th this is a, a different way to, re to, to establish the relationship with the customers. And we are working a lot of this, and Frederick mentioned the internal culture of the organization. And the internal culture of the organization is extremely important to, uh, to change the way we establish the relationship with the customers, and that is not that soft. Mainly when we are talking about organizations like Santander with 180, thousand people working in the organization in 10 different countries with different cultures, we need to push this culture of re really serving the customer, serving uh, the customer in a way that the customer needs to understand that this is an organization for profit, we're not a non-profit organization, so we sell products for a profit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we should serve their needs in a simple, understandable, and easy way to them. That's extremely important, and to, uh, this is our main stakeholder. In that way, we probably need to work a lot in changing the internal culture of the organization. Not easy in very large organizations. Not, not in, in, a, in, a, in a time in which we are transforming the way we relate with the customers. So it's clear that we go for uh, the traditional branches and we run 14,000 around the world to a relationship that is going to be probably midway between branches and digital and not a believer of going for stray from the, the all branches to all digital. So we need to accommodate to what is we perceive, and we should be extremely careful in reading clearly what the customer demand from us, because I cannot force the customers to go digital just because I want to reduce cost. Or the, the, the customer is the one who establishes the rules of the game, and I, I need to accommodate the organization, we need to accommodate, and this is the main challenge, the organization, the employees, the culture, to what the customer need. Uh, so this is the... This that is in the offices, and we're forgetting that, but the experience, um, the user experience for clients of contacting your bank through digital means is, has also a very high satisfaction rate. So that is a very important point. And then indeed, um, in a huge organization like, like, like yours to have uh, cultural values programs to reprogram the mindset of, uh, of, of all clients, of all, um, all employees, is, is a huge task. But if I listen to you, and if I'm honest, maybe in agreement with you, we should turn around the, 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 the my question two and my question three. Because clearly, uh, to talk about profitability, we have um, to first talk about profitability and then place it in a global context. Maybe there is more logic if I listen, when I listen to you talking, because we have a slide on profitability, and it was already mentioned, and if you look at that slide, 
it is really staggering. It's a staggering, it, it paints a very blunt picture. So if I may, I would like you to comment on the issue of how can we make our banking system profitable for it to fulfill, it fun fulfill its function in the economy? And Frederick, may I start with you again? Well, let me say, uh, I, I think it's probably uh, fair to say that beyond what we've uh, discussed uh, and, and to a certain extent, the transforming the business model might help in this challenge, but it's fair to say probably, even from the supervisory point of view, uh, currently the challenge of the European banking sector is about profitability and, and a bit less about uh, solvency or, or liquidity uh, as it could have been uh, four or five years ago. And I think, I must say, uh, it has been frustrated because uh, when we've been discussing um, uh, with uh, different stakeholders, so far this topic has never been discussed openly. A and uh, at the end of the day, uh, when you think about the long-term plan for the financing of the economy, uh, I think we uh, all agree that again, it will be more diversified with more capital markets. As we have said, uh, certainly still with a key role of banks. Banks will have to compete probably uh, on certain element of the value chain with newcomers. We, we know all this. But at the same time, uh, what is clear is we need to ensure that we have a decent profitability. Yeah. You know, they, there's, no, there's no rule, but I stick to uh, something which uh, at least compared with uh, stakeholder expectation, which is above the cost of capital. Personally, I've been saying for quite a while, three years now, that for our bank, Actually, in the current environment, with low rates, low growth, heavy taxation, uh, reaching 10% would be a, a, a decent profitability, much less uh, than in the past. But I would say enough to compete. And that's where I, I think we need to come back to the root uh, 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 for a company like uh, uh, us. This profitability and beyond, as Zidin uh, was saying, beyond an absolute figure, it's again, a capacity to maintain confidence of our shoulders. It's a capacity to potentially, if we wish, uh, collect more capital if we have an opportunity to grow. And uh, of course, uh, if you don't compensate for the cost of capital, it's difficult. An absolute profit, it's also a way to, to invest. Uh, we, we are going to be in a world where uh, to meet all these challenges, uh, you need to be able to invest, to spend. And there is always a risk that uh, again, under too short pressure by markets, you could sacrifice the long term by reducing investment. So you need, uh, again, to have this margin of maneuver uh, on, on the profitability. Needless to say, we have a key role to play ourselves um, on, on the cost side. I mean, uh, and uh, we all look at our costs. Uh, digital technology is an opportunity. Digital, the way to develop new systems is an opportunity. The way to focus, etc., is an opportunity to reduce costs. I always say that cost saving is not uh, just a financial uh, objective. It's a strategic objective to compete. But at the same time, uh, we also depend on uh, regulation, on external environment. It's not just very much for, for this privilege. We actually fell, just as I hoped, as a fly of the wall in the boardroom where you were discussing our future. Thanks very, very much for your insights. Um, and uh, we are certainly there, and you will be there as well in 10 years' time. I am certain of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.